My dad and I have had lots of hunting adventures since I was a little boy. Since my dad moved to Kansas nearly 10 years ago, the trips aren't nearly as frequent, but we make it a point to get in at least one big game hunt a year. This will be our third straight year chasing whitetails in Kansas together. There's a deer coming across that opening. I killed a younger buck last year while my dad killed a great eight point. This year, my plan is to hold out for a big Kansas buck. My name is Willie Schmidt. He's coming this way. I've been a hunter my entire life. It's my passion and it's in my blood. I'm traveling across the globe to find the world's last best hunting adventures that anyone can do on their own if they're willing to go the extra mile. This is Pure Hunting. Pure Hunting is brought to you by Browning, the best there is. Optologic. Precision Optics. Spot Hog, the world's toughest archery products. ESP, your hearing matters. And by Fox Pro, high performance game calls. High mountain seasonings, make your own jerky, sausage, smoked meats and more. Nose Jammer, not a cover scent, not an attractant. Jam them with Nose Jammer. And the all new Mantis Trail Camera. Icon Trail Cameras, fuel the addiction. This is the third year in a row for my dad and me to hunt together in Kansas. He grew up in this part of the state, so we're just hunting farms that belong to his friends and their families. Most aren't managed for deer, but for turkey and upland game. Although he waited until the last day, he killed a really great eight point to cap off last year's hunt, and I was thrilled to have been right by his side. Our plan was to hunt together every day for the first four days or so until he had some work to do. But unfortunately, plans don't always go as expected. Well, it's opening day of Kansas rifle season. It's supposed to be a father-son hunt. <laughs> but about four o'clock this morning, my dad woke up throwing up and not sure if it was food poisoning or part of the flu. So this morning I'm solo. But we came out yesterday and scouted and got to familiarize myself with the properties we hunted last year, know my way around. and that's actually real close to where my dad shot his deer last year. And we saw some deer, saw a pretty decent buck, and go wait for them to filter back from the fields, give it a couple hours, and see where we go from there. I got set up before daybreak, which was good, but I struggled with where to set up. I wanted to get high enough for a good vantage point, but that put me further away from where I expected the deer movement. It seems you're always giving something up to gain something else. We started getting here this morning. First of all, there's hardly any wind, which makes it tough because it just swirls and switches. So instead of getting down to the bottom, I decided to stay up high. So my scent's not cruising around down in there. We got a neighboring hunter came and sat down on a corner a few hundred yards from us. The minute I just saw a buck working this way, probably going to work the drainage, but he's got to come a long way to get to where I can shoot him. This guy may see him first. But it shows there's still some deer movement coming back from these fields. There's a buck. It's a pretty good eight. His G2 on his right side's broken. But he's a heavy eight. He's coming down that fence line. If he jumps the fence, he's on the property we, we can hunt. There's a little eight to the right of him. He just came out of nowhere. They're less than 100 yards from that hunter. I don't know if he sees them or not. The big eight's gonna hop the fence. He's a good deer, but with that broken G2, I don't think he's a first day buck. He's a nice looking deer. As you always do, I hope I don't regret that coming the last day of the hunt. There's another eight. It's a different one. He's a pretty good buck. His G2's not broken. He's not as heavy. Just coming out of those trees right at that end of that fence line. That's well, exciting going from nothing to four bucks pretty quick. I really don't want to mess this property up knowing that there's some deer probably bedded down in that bottom. So just go take a look at that point, see what I can see, and then uh, make a game plan for the middle part of the day in this afternoon. 
After not seeing any deer movement for a while and assuming that most of them had bed down for the day, it was time to grab some food and see how my dad was feeling, hopefully well enough to hunt in the afternoon. My dad's still not feeling very well, so he's gonna take this afternoon off. Got a great south wind. This is a property that we saw a bunch of deer on last year. We didn't shoot one off of here. But with the south wind gonna get in his finger that drops him to the river bottom. A lot of movement up and down the river. It's a bunch of winter wheat and some old cut cornfields around here. So we're gonna get in there a little bit early and sit, may rattle and grunt a little bit just to see if we can pique a buck's interest. And just sit there and then let the natural movement out to feed hopefully take place. I moved through the draw into position and unfortunately I did bump a buck. He didn't appear too spooked and the wind was still good. So I decided to stay there, set up, and hopefully see him or other deer as they began to go out to feed later in the afternoon. It was a nice buck, but a young one and not what I came to Kansas for. I sat there until the end of the day and saw some other wildlife, but no mature deer. Day one was now in the books and I'm hoping my dad feels better and can join me for tomorrow. Here's a deer, here's a buck. That's a good buck. Slow down. My dad feels better this morning, so we finally get to hunt together on our second day. We got a pretty good north wind, so let's go try set up on this property on a different spot. Okay. I think we can see in the bottom pretty good. We also can see off to the west. That should work well. They, they come in from the south too sometimes, but we just saw that one. Right. And they, we might intercept them. We saw some cutting out across the open flat, and we'd be able to see them right. in a much I'm closer range. Sure those ones coming in from the yeah. south, you remember? Yeah. A plan doesn't always come together, especially hunting. The deer didn't cooperate this morning. We sat for hours and saw a bunch of wildlife, but no deer. There was a full moon last night, so maybe the deer were back in their beds early, just really didn't see much movement today. After our morning set, my dad suggested we meet up with his friend Rod and a few of his friends and set up a deer drive or two for the middle part of the day. Well, why don't Dad and Lance and I take off and we'll get up there, find a spot where we can sort of see, because there's a chance they may run up, you know, that way. We're going to try to flank them. I'm going to take Sharvati in. Up on that, okay. Up on that and try to bring them this way. But just don't get too close to that draw because they are yeah. right down in that draw. Right, right. And okay. I'm going to come in from the fence line and push them that way. Okay. And, okay. Okay. That's the deal. It's not my favorite way to hunt, but it's a very popular method and a good way to see deer in the middle part of the day and see where some big deer may be bedding. Here comes three deer. Two does and a little buck. Coming right at us. Couple deer, bigger buck. Not big enough. Little eight. Well, they came out just 100 yards away or so. If that was a big one, we could have had a shot. Could you have shot that one, Dad? Sure. Go through the heart. I don't mess around. After such a slow morning, it was nice to see some deer. Dad's friends had to leave for the afternoon, but my dad and I decided to do another midday drive, just the two of us on another piece of property. Pretty good looking draw. Dad offered to do the walking, so I dropped him off and went to get into position. Got a good wind, south wind, so my dad can drop into that draw. His scent will blow up through there and hopefully push a deer out, not too, not too aggressively to where they're running out of here. See if he can push a buck out to us. Here's a deer, here's a buck. It's a good buck. Slow down. Jump the fence. Well, a 
drive that almost worked. Finally, a big buck holed up in a draw. My dad pushed him out. The only thing was the deer didn't read the script. He went out left and didn't offer a shot. Didn't slow down. And we were only probably 80 yards from the road at that. And uh, he crossed it and went off the property. Pretty nice buck. Not a giant, but certainly one I would have taken. So maybe we're getting closer. We'll grab a bite to eat. Close, but no cigar. Two does to your left, Dad. Oh. There's a buck. There it is. Okay. Take it when you can. We all know how the use of electric hunting vehicles has changed the game of how we hunt and access our properties. Not only by minimizing the time and noise, but also controlling the amount of scent that is dispersed into areas you know the animals are in. The Quiet Cat is constructed out of mountain bike grade aluminum, ensuring super strength while maintaining its ultra lightweight integrity. It's designed to be compact enough to fit inside the back of an SUV and light enough to lift in and out of a truck, making it the most versatile hunting vehicle ever built. We have designed Quiet Cat with a powerful in hub motor to navigate any type of terrain. The lithium ion battery technology allows thousands of charges. This advanced machinery has the ability to carry one rider over 50 miles on a single cycle creating the ultimate stealth hunting vehicle. Four inches of front and rear suspension provide a comfortable ride which absorbs the variability of off-road travel. Quiet Cat's lean technology permits magnificent maneuvering. For the rider that wants a more rigid ride or added stability, simply engage the lockout mechanism. Every nut, bolt, and component of the Quiet Cat has been plotted to be stealth. That's why we came up with the slogan, built like a bull, hunt like a cat. Bottom line, the Quiet Cat is portable, affordable, stealthy, and loaded with top-end features. So pick yours today by visiting quietcat.com. Quiet Cat is a new ultimate hunting machine that is built like a bull and hunts like a cat. set up a little bit on a high spot so we could see behind us in case they come in that way which I know they've done in the past set up on this winter wheat the wind is perfect got in early enough the deer will hopefully start moving any time but at least in a half an hour my dad uh, had a few other things to do and, and uh, figured he didn't need to sit in the ground line this afternoon we got a few days left in the hunt and we're gonna hunt hard the next couple of days but uh, get within the night to watch some football have some pizza and hopefully tell a few stories about the big buck we're gonna get tonight just as we hoped as the sun sank lower the deer started to move Unfortunately, it didn't happen. The big boy didn't come out. Once the deer started funneling out, I had probably 18 deer in the field when it was all said and done. Probably six bucks. You uh, can't shoot a big buck every time you go in the woods, otherwise everybody would be doing it. And hopefully if you put your time and effort in, you'll be rewarded every once in a while. We didn't see much deer movement again today. The full moon and warm temperatures are just not helping. Rod suggested we do another drive to end the day, and my dad and I headed up to a familiar lookout as the blockers. We decided to do one last drive for this evening. So dad and I are set up here on the east edge of this drainage. Rod and Dave are at the uh, west edge, and they're gonna slowly move this way. Early in the drive, there looked to be a nice buck in the distance. 
Hopefully, Rod and Dave could get him to come in our direction. It was Dad's turn to shoot, and we heard some rustling in the leaves below. Turns out it was just a coyote. He's lucky we were waiting on deer. Suddenly we saw movement, and these were deer. There's a deer coming across that opening, so we better be ready down here in the bottom, Dad. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Might come up here. I just heard a grunt. It's a buck, so let's be ready. I didn't see how big he was. Two does to your left, Dad. What? Two does to your left. Oh. There's a buck. There it is. Okay. Drive finally worked. There he is. Good looking deer. Yeah. He's a nice Kansas buck, don't you think? Absolutely. Nothing broken off. No, uh -uh. we've seen some broken bucks already. Good mass there. Nice. Made it up on the flat, make it getting out of here a little bit easier. We've killed a lot of animals together, and this isn't going to be the last. Nice. Go, Pop. Fun hunt. There's a deer over here. There's a buck. Programming brought to you by The Sportsman's Guide, the largest supplier of brand name hunting gear at closeout prices. At The Sportsman's Guide, you'll save on everything from boots and clothing to tree stands and accessories. The Sportsman's Guide, lowest prices, best quality, guaranteed. Wheeler Delta Series, the most comprehensive line of AR-15 tools available. Innovatively designed to perform with precision and ease. Everything you need to build, repair, and maintain the AR platform. Pure Hunting is brought to you by Browning, the best there is. Optologic, precision optics. Smith Optics, inside every warrior is an athlete. Bowtech, refuse to follow. And by the Ghost Blind. One blind, total concealment, any environment. Crossbreed holsters, leaders in holster concealment and comfort. Handmade in the USA, quality archery designs. Focus on the shot, we take care of the rest. And by Tenzing and Grim Reaper. This is supposed to be the last day of my hunt. And with my dad's tag filled and little deer movement again, my dad wanted to drive a piece of property where I killed my deer the year before. I'll go around and set up where I did last year in that sort of pinch point okay. funnel. They'll obviously get your scent and hopefully come running. Nothing less than a 160. Okay. All right. I'll leave no buck unturned. You <laughs> got it. All <laughs> okay. right. Good luck. Okay. While my dad waited 15 minutes or so to start walking, I got set up in the same position where I shot my buck last season. This looks like a spot, the same spot as last year. You can see pretty much anything comes down through this funnel. It didn't take long for the action to start. There's a deer over here. Can't tell what he is. It is a buck, a decent eight. If he's bigger than last year, he's not much. It's too bad, because he offered a great shot. Nice buck. I've, I've shot several deer about that size, and I'm holding out for something bigger. I didn't hear any shots, but then I said the same thing last year, and you had a deer when I came up. One pretty decent eight point came out. No does, no fawns, nothing. I called home and somehow talked my way into one last morning hunt. Dad had to get back to work, so I was hunting solo on what was truly my last morning hunt in Kansas. Gotta get a little more aggressive on your last day. This truly is the last day. <laughs> I'm going home after this. Probably sit till about nine o'clock, and nothing would make me happier than be cleaning a deer out in about an hour from now, throwing him in the back of the truck, and taking him to Colorado. I got to the edge of the field along the tree line well before sunrise. This gave me a good vantage point for any deer coming back from feeding and heading to bed down for the day. 
Unfortunately, once again, it was a very quiet morning for deer movement. Oh, I've been here about two hours and have not seen a deer. So I think I'm gonna work south, get to the property line. Sun will be in our favor. Wind will be good. Just slowly working around the river bottom and see if we can catch one in its bed. If not, it's Tag Soup, Kansas. to yet another great hunting trip. Anytime I can spend time in the outdoors with my dad, it's a special hunt. I was right by my dad's side when he killed his buck and that's a recipe for great memories. I set my sights high on this hunt after killing a couple of smaller bucks the past few years and when you do that, you risk not taking one. I could have killed several bucks on this hunt, but that's not what this hunt was about for me. We're doing it on our own on unmanaged properties and even though we know there are big deer around, there are no guarantees we're going to shoot one, much less see them. Even though the best tag soup doesn't taste very good, there are no regrets on this pure hunting hunt. Yeah.